Joining us here at ASCO 2012 is Elise Cohen, MD. She is a senior investigator with the National Cancer Institute, and she is here to do an educational piece for the Society of Gynecologic Oncology. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So your expertise is primarily in the area of ovarian cancer. How would you describe the landscape for, for treatments of patients right now? I think it's a very exciting time for the women who have ovarian cancer. There is a multitude of new drugs coming out, and together with carefully generated clinical trials, I think we're going to make a big impact in the quality of life and the quantity of life for our patients. We have two different sets of approaches coming out, classical chemotherapy and combinations, and the new targeted elements, which include immunotherapy, specific targeted drugs to biochemical pathways and how we're interacting these drugs together. So I think we're going to have an explosion of new directions, an explosion of new opportunities, and we'll just have to be very cautious about thinking about the best way to do these trials for the women with ovarian cancer. Given the genetic diversity of serous ovarian cancers, what are the future directions for so-called personalized medicine in this disease? I, I would love and all of my colleagues in the field would love to be able to say this is perfect for you and that we're going to make a long-term difference for each individual but I don't think we're there yet. I think we've made really remarkable gains in the last couple of years in understanding what serous ovarian cancer is and now we're subsetting this rare disease but we're going to be able to understand and target drugs better we now know that the low-grade serous can ovarian cancer patients have a very different genetic and overall behavior of their cancer to the high-grade patients. And within the high-grade patients, we're starting to understand different dominant behaviors. So we're going to be able to personalize it for those small groups with our goal of ultimately getting towards treating the individual in a unique fashion. I think it's an important goal, and we're making progress in that direction. Okay. Do you believe biologics are best used in combination with each other or with cytotoxic chemotherapy? The biologics is a very large category of drugs. It includes those drugs that are targeting the biology of the environment by treating the immunological system, immunotherapy and vaccines. There's a subset of, bio of biologics that are targeting angiogenesis, an area that's been very successful in gynecologic cancers, and we're moving forward into initial therapy. There's the new collection of other biochemical targets that are critical in how the cell divides, how the cell migrates, how the cell talks to its local environment. And I think if we look at the tumor as a very complex neighborhood, Putting different drugs together makes sense, so that if we pick different targeted agents that might target the immune system and the support structure, we may be more successful than using either one alone. The thing we have to keep in mind is when we use cytotoxic chemotherapy, we're targeting the division of the cell. We may be doing the same thing to the local environment. That may be a collateral benefit or a collateral damage. It's not the kind of thing where you can take one out of column A and one out of column B and presume they're just going to be fine together. So my bias is I think we have a lot of opportunities mixing targeted agents in a biochemical and biologically rational fashion. And those, to me, as a scientist, are easier to organize than taking a targeted agent and trying to figure out what the best cytotoxic chemotherapy and the best way to put them together. Luckily, we have a lot of really bright colleagues doing investigational studies to try and look at both of these opportunities. Okay. You're recognized as a clinical trialist and your focus is translational endpoints. What do you feel is the role of tumor biopsies in clinical trials today? My bias is that they're critical. Thus far, we have this huge collection of drugs, but we don't really know how all of them work. And importantly, we don't always know what the end runaround is causing them not to work. It would be fine to be able to just take blood or take a piece of skin or a scraping inside the mouth and say the drug caused this behavior, therefore it's doing the same thing in the tumor. Except that we know with all the genetics that we've been learning that there are changes in the tumor that don't happen in the normal cells. So if we take a piece of tumor 
while it'll be biased to just that point where the biopsy was, we're going to learn something about what's happening in the tumor that may be unique to the tumor and will allow us to understand the mechanism of action of the drugs or the combinations. So while they are more difficult for patients and there is a cost involved, I think it's a critical element in really advancing our field. I work at the National Cancer Institute at the intramural program where we're able to do biopsies where our patients consent at no additional cost to the patient. The tax dollars fund our work and so we've been incorporating biopsies routinely into our investigational trials to get that important mechanism information. Let me ask you one last thing. What are your thoughts about the current trend of using old non-cancer drugs to treat certain forms of gynecologic cancer? I think it's exciting. I think it's also exciting that we can repurpose some old cancer drugs. I think one of the most significant advances in this concept of repurposing an old non-cancer drug is the, star the story of metformin. We learned that a long time ago that obesity was a major risk factor in development of endometrioid endometrial cancer, the whole metabolic phenotype. We know that there's a very high preponderance of type 2 diabetes in those patients. We now have epidemiologic data telling us that women who had metformin for their diabetes either had a reduced likelihood of, of endometrial cancer or a better outcome. Similar data are coming out in ovarian cancer and even now breast cancer and other solid tumors. Now we need to figure out how to best use metformin to our advantage, potentially as a preventative and potentially as a therapeutic. I think it's a very exciting opportunity for us as a field. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure we could talk for hours. I hope you'll come back and join us again. My pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Elise Cohn, Senior Investigator at the National Cancer Institute, joining us here to shed some of her thoughts on ASCO 2012.